Have you ever wanted to release a really cool new feature for your app, but weren't sure if your users would feel as excited about it as you did? Or maybe you had an idea for a new onboarding flow in your app, but imagined a few different ways it could be implemented and wanted to figure out which option would work best. Well, Remote Config is well suited for both of these scenarios and can provide a solution in just a few lines of code. So Remote Config, as the name suggests, allows you to remotely configure different app experiences or features and gives you control for how you expose them to your users. It does this by providing a set of key value pairs that live in the cloud and that are consumed in your app that you can configure with different values based on different conditions. This makes rolling out features, personalizing app experiences, and running A-B tests in your apps possible with just a few lines of code. So for example, let's say there's a new feature you want to test out, but only to 30% of your users at first to get feedback and see if the feature is stable and users are liking it. Well, you can configure a Boolean remote config parameter called new feature with the value false for 70% of your users and true for a random 30% to set this up and test it out. Or let's say you're building a game and want to A-B test different game difficulties to see what leads to the most user engagement. Using more complex remote config parameters like a JSON variable, you can configure different game setting variants and run an A-B test to see which one users like best, or even cater different difficulty settings for different players based on their skill level. Also, we've recently added personalization in remote config a new feature which can automatically select personalized values on a per user basis using machine learning algorithms to optimize for a specific goal you care about. For example, maybe personalizing the best time to prompt the user to visit your store and make a purchase to optimize the likelihood that they'll buy something. There are a lot of possibilities. And one of the great things is that after doing an initial implementation of remote config for one of these scenarios, you can keep making changes without the need to build, deploy, and publish new versions of your app. So let's get started on how we can use remote config in my sample Android app. Meet saying hello. It's a pretty simple app that lets people say hello to each other in as many words as they'd like to use. The app works well enough, but there's definitely room for improvement. For one, the current UI is a bit bland. I wonder if there's a way to make that a bit more exciting by testing out a new visual element on the screen. Also, at the moment, there's no limit to how much text I can enter in my greeting, which can make for some rather lengthy greeting messages. I wonder if the length of messages is impacting how much users read and write greetings in the app, and if there's a sweet spot for a length limit that will lead to optimal engagement. Let's use Remote Config to help with both of these use cases. First, I'll use Remote Config to do a phased rollout of a new visual element in my interface. And second, I'll use Remote Config to do an A-B test for different length limits on my greetings messages. Let's look at how we can use Remote Config to implement both of these use cases. The neat thing is that the process for any use case will look very similar to what I'll cover here. So you'll be able to adapt these steps for whichever use case you want to implement in your app too. Let's get started. Now, before we get into it, you'll need to have an Android app and a Firebase project set up and ready to go in order to follow along. If you don't have a Firebase project and Android app ready, no worries. Just check out this video on getting started with Firebase on Android to get one set up. The link is in the description, so go on and do that first and come right back to keep following along. One quick note is that when you're creating your Firebase project for the first time, you'll be given the option to enable Google Analytics. I'd recommend doing this because while Remote Config doesn't need Google Analytics to work, there are additional features that are enabled through Google Analytics, like A-B testing, that will be useful to have for the second use case we're going to cover today. Now that you have a Firebase product configured and your Android app ready, let's walk through how to add Remote Config to your Android app. First up, we need to add the Firebase SDK dependencies to our Android app build.gradle file. There are a few ways to do that. One, using a Firebase BOM or Bill of Materials, which makes it easy to manage Firebase SDK versions in our app. Or two, adding each SDK dependency individually. The nice thing about the BOM method is that I only need to keep track of the latest version of the BOM and can then use canonical SDK dependencies for the products I want to use, namely Remote Config and Google Analytics. Specifying the correct BOM automatically ensures that I'll have the latest version of any other Firebase SDKs I'm using in my project. So I'll go with that. Now, as I mentioned before, you can use Remote Config without Google Analytics, 
but RC is a lot more powerful with GA, so I recommend adding it on here too. And that's it. We're now ready to start using remote config in our app. Let's start with my first use case and use remote config to do a phased rollout for a new visual element in my app. As for the visual element that I'll add in, maybe a new background image in my greetings text input area could add a bit of pizzazz to my app. There. Now I want to use remote config to do a phased rollout of this new feature to see how users like it and to make sure it's stable before I roll it out more widely. I'll need to create a remote config parameter that can act as a feature flag for my new background image. A Boolean flag will probably do the trick, so let's use that and go to the console to see how I can set it up. So here I am in my Firebase project. I'll scroll on down to the remote config section in the side panel, select it, and then click on create configuration to create my first remote config parameters and conditions. I'll name this parameter show background image and set its data type to Boolean and give it a meaningful description. Now I can set a default value and I can choose between true or false or toggle this setting here to use in-app default values. We'll look at setting in-app defaults in our second use case. For now, I'll set the default value to false since we won't be showing the new background image to most users just yet. This leads me to add my first remote config conditional value by clicking on add new conditional value and selecting create new condition. Here is one instance where we can see how flexible and powerful remote config actually is since I can set new values for my parameters based on many different kinds of conditions. For example, I can choose to set a different value based on which platform, language, country, and region my users are in, as well as which analytics audience a user belongs to. This is one example of how Google Analytics powers up remote config even further, since you can create different analytics audiences and customize their experience to what best suits them. For example, customizing game difficulty based on the expertise level of the player, or adjusting the in-store purchasing experience between purchaser and non-purchaser groups to optimize your app revenue. There are many use cases possible here, but in the case of doing our phased rollout of the new background image feature, we can just use the user in random percentile condition and set this to say 30%. I'll then name this condition random 30% of users and click on create condition. Now I can select the value for this condition. And for this random 30% group of users, I'll set the value to true so that they'll be exposed to the new background image feature. Then I'll hit save and click on publish changes to make it available to any app instances out there so 30% of my users can see the new feature. There's only one problem. My application code isn't using a remote config yet. So let's look at the steps needed to add it in. So the first thing I'll need to do is access and configure the remote config singleton instance in my application code, which can be done with this handy reference right here. Next, I'll need to configure my remote config instance. The main thing I need to configure is how often I want remote config to check for new parameter values that could apply to this app instance. So as I create, update, and publish new remote config parameter values, as I just did in the console, I need to tell remote config how often I want my app to check for those new values and apply them to my app instance. So let me configure that now. A good place to do this configuration is probably in my main activity. So I'll create our remote config settings object and set the minimum fetch interval in seconds parameter to 3600 seconds, so once every hour. You'll want to adjust this value based on what makes the most sense for your app, but be careful, you don't want to set this value too low, since checking too often from every app instance out there could lead to a rate limiting error from the remote config servers. For my app, once an hour sounds about right, since I don't anticipate that my RC parameter values will be updated so often. And this value works within the bounds to make sure I don't hit any rate limits. Next, I'll need to make the call to fetch and activate the remote config parameters. This will perform both the act of fetching the parameter values from the server and activating those retrieved values for use. These calls are also available separately as fetch and activate if you need to break down each of the actions in your app. Now, since this is an asynchronous call, I can add an oncomplete listener that returns when the fetch and activation is completed and that I can use to log that fact. And now I can go to my fragment and make the call to retrieve the RC parameter to determine if I'm going to show the new background image or not. Now you might think that I should be all set to go, but if I were to try and run this now, 
my background image will still never show up, even if I was in the 30% group exposed to the new feature. The reason why this won't work as you might expect just yet is because the call to fetch and activate my remote config parameters is asynchronous, which means that the call may not have completed before my app has completed updating the remote config parameter values. There are a few options to address this. The first option is to move the initialization and loading of the rest of my visual components into the completion listener. But it seems like a bad idea to delay the rest of the app from loading up based on when the network call from the RC servers completes. Another option is that it's actually fine if the app doesn't use the remote config parameter values the very first time the app is opened, as long as the values get applied and the new feature is loaded from the next time my user opens the app and onwards. This is actually fine for this example. And so I'll add some functionality to check the feature flag for my new background image in my fragments on resume method as well, which ensures it'll get picked up later. For your own app, you'll want to choose whichever works best. The first option can still be the best one if you're careful about how your app is structured and the rest of your app can still load up independently from the new feature that you want to test. So only that component needs to wait for the RC network call to complete to load up. In my case, since I'm not holding up the loading of other components based on the retrieved remote config parameters, I'll need a default that will work here instead. Thankfully for the get Boolean method, that default is false when there are no previously retrieved values available or a default hasn't been set. But there are times where we'll want to set a different default and we'll see how to do that in the second use case we set up when AB testing different text limits next. Finally, the last thing to do is to test out the implementation. In order to do that, I'll set the minimum fetch interval to zero seconds so that I'm always getting fresh values from the RC servers in my fetch and activate call. And maybe I'll also toggle the default value for the show background image parameter to true so that it shows up for all users and then ensure that it's getting picked up in my app. I could also temporarily remove the 30% condition during testing and reapply it when I'm ready for deployment too. All right, I'm done setting up the feature flag for my new background image. Now let's move on to the second use case where I want to A-B test different length limits on my greetings messages. First thing I'll need to do is to go back to the Firebase console to set up the remote config parameters for the test. So I'm back in the console in the remote config section and I'll click on add parameter. I'll name this one greeting max length and give it a good description. But in this case for the default value, I'll use in-app defaults, which I'll configure in a moment. Then I'll click on save and then publish changes in order to make this new parameter available to my app. Next, let's set up an A-B test for this parameter. I'll click on the overflow menu here and select A-B test, which opens up the remote config experiment section. I'll leave the defaults experiment name and add a helpful description and click next. Now I can select the target app for the test, which is my Android app and choose how many users I want to expose to this A-B test. I'll say 15% and click next where I can set the goals for this test. This will determine what metric I want to use to determine the winner between my different A-B testing variants. In terms of goals to choose, there are a few predefined ones like user retention and crash-free users, as well as Google Analytics events we want to optimize for. This is where the integration with Google Analytics comes in handy. In this case, even though I haven't logged this event in my app yet, I can create a new analytics event that I want to optimize for. Let's see, message sent sounds like a good goal here. Then there are some additional metrics I can track for each variant to make sure that there aren't any unintended impacts or to see if there are additional benefits for any of the variants in addition to the main goal I'm tracking. And finally, that takes me to defining my variants. For the baseline, I'm gonna use the in-app default, which will probably be something like 100 characters. For the other variants, I'll set one really short one and one much longer one. Then I'll click on review and I'm ready to start my experiment. But before I go ahead and hit that start experiment button, I need to add and use their new remote config parameters I just created in my application code. So I just need to get the new remote config parameter value and set it as the max length from my edit text component. Note that I've already made the calls to configure remote config and fetch and activate my remote config parameters. So no need to do that again. But I'm not completely done just yet. I also need to set the in-app default value for my new remote config parameter. This is particularly important because I want to ensure a consistent experience for users who open the app for the first time. 
and I don't want the app to have to wait for a full round trip to the remote config servers before having a default value to load for this part of my app. First, I'll create an RC defaults XML file right here in the resources XML folder. The contents are just a simple map of key value pairs describing the default values for each of my remote config parameters. Then I'll set the defaults by going back to my main activity and making the call remoteconfig.setDefaultsAsync, passing in the ID of the default XML file I just created. Note that although this is an asynchronous call, because it's just reading from a local file, it completes nearly instantaneously. So if I did want to load the rest of my visual components in a callback here, it would be a lot safer and keep my app responsive while it loaded up the correct default values. And that's it. My application code is now set up to be assigned to one of the three text length size variants that I've configured in the console. And I can let the experiment run and come back to the results in the console after a while, like say three to four weeks or so, provided I get enough test data. Here's an example of what a complete A-B test that determined a winner looks like in the console. Now you might have remembered that I also mentioned that we recently launched personalization, which automatically selects the best experience on a per user basis using some machine learning algorithms on the back end. Let's say I wanted to personalize the character limit for greeting messages in my app to each user, rather than determine if there is one winning option via A-B testing. Well, I could stop my A-B test and then using the same remote config parameter, open it to instead create a new personalization. From here, I could enter the same values for the personalization, and for my objective, I could either choose to optimize for user engagement or the same custom message sent event I used for my A-B test. Next, I can choose my target condition, and rather than limit it to just 15 or 30% of my users, I can target it to all users on my Android app, because again, personalization will choose the best option for each user and adjust it based on what works best on an individual basis. And the code to implement this would be exactly the same as what I already have set up for the previous A-B test, so I would already be all set to go. For something as fundamental to my app as a character limit though, I probably wouldn't want to use personalization here and instead save it for something like ad frequency or placement or difficulty levels in a game. And that's it. You are now ready to use remote config. Now get out there and build something wonderful and let us know in the comments if you have any questions or want to let us know about what you built.